On today's episode, I'm going to talk about printing with PETG or PETG filament, and I'll give you some tips and tricks to make it easier. I also have some Cura profiles for PETG that you can download in the description below to help you get started. So let's cover it all right here on Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of these Patreon supporters. This video is also sponsored by Creality3dofficial.com by Comgro. When I do a printer evaluation, I tend to use PLA because it's very common. And for that, I use my Filament Friday Filament Red. Now, I no longer sell this, but I have a bunch of it in stock. So that's what I use as the base for my evaluations. It's also the filament I use to tune my profiles for PLA that I released through previous videos. But for PETG, I really don't have that base filament, so I've tried a bunch of different ones, including this new one from Greengate 3D that I got at MRF, Midwest RepRap Festival. And so far, I like the way it prints. So each one I've done a temperature tower, and I've got this 3D print that you can download along with the G-code that's already set for temperatures that start out at 215 and go up to 240. So I print these so I can determine what temperature to print the PETG at. Now PETG will print at a higher temperature than PLA, typically around 220 to 240 degrees. On an Ender 2 Pro, Ender 3, or any of the Ender 3 clones that are out there, they all do the same thing. They run this PTFE tubing all the way down to the nozzle. So the PTFE tubing is going to see the same temperature that you're printing at. And at 230 degrees C, PTFE tubing starts to break down. So anything above 230, even though this machine can go to 260 in its firmware, you're really starting to push the reliability of your PTFE tubing if you go beyond 230. Small prints, fine. So that works on this. Larger prints, not so good. To get the full temperature capability out of an Ender 2 or Ender 3, I recommend you put the Slice Engineering Heat Break. I did a video on that. I'll put a link to it up here. And that way you can get the full temperature capability and your PTFE tubing will last a lot longer. But for a stock machine like this, which I know a lot of people have, I tend to stick with PETG that can print right around 225 degrees C. So that's why I do my temp towers to see where I'm at. And most of these can do pretty well at that temperature. So that's actually what I use in my profiles as well. And this Greengate 3D prints really well at 225 degrees C. Another thing you got to look out for with PETG is cooling. It doesn't want to be cooled real fast like PLA. So I'll run the fan at 50% speed, not 100% speed like I do with PLA. So I slow that down. And also, it likes to stick really good to glass, sometimes to the point that it'll actually peel the glass off and you remove it. Or in some cases, it won't stick to the bed at all. And this material that's on the Ender 2 Pro actually likes PETG pretty well. I'm getting some pretty good adhesion there. but. For most PETG prints, it's recommended to use a glue stick. When it sticks too good, it's actually going to stick to the glue stick, which gives you a separation so it's easy to remove it without breaking the glass. And if it's not sticking very well in the material, then the glue stick actually holds it. So even though some people call this a Band-Aid, it's actually recommended in most cases for printing PETG. Another thing with PETG is it likes to string. It's really hard to print with no stringing. I know some people are really good at doing that. My profiles have got it down pretty good, but I wouldn't say they're perfect, but it's really, really minor stringing what I can blow away with a heat gun. But you also have to keep your PETG dry because it'll absorb moisture much easier than PLA. So it's best to keep it sealed in a bag with desiccant, not open like this. The results I'm getting with this Greengate 3D in my profiles, I'm pretty happy with. Now this is a unique color, but I'd love your input on them. So I'm going to link to my profiles. I'll put them on things so you can just download them and try them out yourself. I got the whole list, the, all the extra fast profiles, my best, my good. And so you can try them out and give me your feedback. Maybe you can recommend some minor improvements if you see it on your machine. I'd love to get that in the comments below. I've done a lot of testing of PETG and other filaments on this little Ender 2 Pro. And if you're looking at getting one of these, this is a great time to do it. Because my sponsor, Creality 3D Official by Comgro, has these on sale. Check it out. Creality3dofficial.com by Comgro has the full lineup of Creality machines, including filament. And you can even buy in bulk and build your print farm right from Creality3dofficial.com. 
Best of all, they got one of my favorite little printers, the Ender 2 Pro, on sale for $139 in stock. So get one now before they're gone. And if you want to get the latest Ender 3 Neo series, they've got those in stock as well with auto level. These printers work really well. So visit Creality3Dofficial.com by Comgrow. Now if you want to print at a different temperature with my profiles, go ahead and manually change it. I don't use the automatic change that's in Cura. I find it's better to hard code that in. I prefer it that way and then I can make a profile basically for any filament that I want and just rename it as such. So try out my profiles if you want to change them to match your filament. Go ahead and do it, but give me your results in the comments below. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.